What's up everybody? I'm so excited to show you the Bricks Forge 3.0 node editor. It's such an amazing new tool that came out in Bricks Forge 3.0 beta. It should be released in January in a couple weeks, we think. But I'm going to dive in and show you what I've built with this AgeGate example. And the node editor with a little bit of JavaScript is controlling all of the user experience, all of the local storage items that we're storing on the browser. So we're going to dive into all of that and see exactly how it's working. And I like the age gate example because you might want to restrict content so people have to agree to your terms, your privacy policy before they view it. So you can set that storage item and say, hey, they clicked yes, and then that will persist over their uh, browser so when they come back they don't have to do it again unless you set it to expire so right now we do not have a storage item that is tied to our age gate so we have to click yes let me in so when you click it it will show you the page content and the pop-up will go away and then if we go to another page it's not going to pop up again because we've already said hey we accept so let's hit the inspect on Google Chrome and come over to the application tab. And we're gonna be looking at the local storage. And right here, you'll see I've set a key value called age gate with a value of verified and an expiration, which is one hour from when the user clicked the button. So the tool will check to see if this local storage item exists and then if it doesn't it's going to run the pop-up and if it does it's not going to annoy the user with the pop-up over and over again so if we delete this item here and refresh the page our age gate's going to pop up in the javascript there's some console uh, console logs that says age gate is not set and then when we click yes let me in We'll check out the console log so you can kind of see what's going on. So the first one was it's not set. Then we submit the Bricks Forge Pro form. And then it says, hey, the age gate is set to verified for one hour. So that's kind of what's going on with the workflow. So let's dive in and see exactly how all of this is working. So I'm going to go to the templates page of Bricks. So Bricks and then templates, and then I built this age gate pop-up, and it is a template type of pop-up. One thing you're gonna need while we're here is this template ID. So grab that and save that somewhere because we're gonna need that later. We don't need the short code, we just need this template ID, which is 894. So let's dive into the Bricks pop-up template and see what's going on. One thing to note is we're using Bricks Forge ProForm. So the node editor, I do not believe works with the Bricks native form. But if you have Bricks Forge, you should be using the ProForm because it's so much more powerful. So please use the ProForm when you're following this tutorial. So let's take a look at the section. And I'm not gonna go over all the styles because you can build your own pop-up template. What we're looking at is the node editor, but there's a few things you might wanna check out before we move forward and i've got the section set to 100 view height so that it takes up the whole page then we've got a container an svg a heading and then a wrapper for the form and a wrapper for the submit button so with this pro form all we've got is a submit button and our actions are set to confetti i think you can set to email or something else, but you have to set it to something. So I'm just using confetti right now because if you don't set it, I think it's gonna error out. So you always have to have it do something when you hit submit. You could log the user that they submitted. Um, you can do whatever you want. You could make this form have a checkbox that says, hey, do you accept our terms and conditions? Or by clicking here, you agree whatever you want. So that's the general structure panel layout. And then let's take a look at the settings. So if we go to template settings, 
and conditions. So I click the gear icon, conditions under template settings. We're going to have entire website. So this is going to load everywhere. And then under the pop-up, I have close on none so that they can't close it or try to get it to go away. I mean, I guess they could open up the browser and then uh, delete the DOM element if they wanted, or you could design it so that it redirects to the home page or whatever. But I've just got it set to close on none for now. And then on the backdrop, I have the background set to this blue color, which is my primary color variable, and then a transition of zero milliseconds. So this is just some of the interactions that happened that I didn't like and wanted to change. And then I've set the background to the same color so that it is just this general blue color. And that's really it. The most important part though is your condition, entire website. Make sure that's set. And then for the wrapper, uh, the container here, I've got it set to white with a little bit of a padding. That's really it. So let's dive into the cool part, which is the node editor. So if you're over in the admin and you go to Bricks Forge, we have an updated uh, user interface, which I think looks really nice. And then we need to have the Bricks Forge panel turned on. This is going to control the node editor. And man, once I saw it for the first time, it just blew me away. It looks really nice and works really well too. So let's go check it out. So once you've turned on that Bricks Forge panel, you'll see this shortcut up at the top and it's this kind of yellow icon here. And it kind of, I don't know what it is exactly, but that's the Bricks Forge panel. So you click it and it'll pop up at the bottom here and then you can drag it up and down and you can see the workflow. Man, it's just, this is so cool. I just love it so much. So what do we got going here? Uh, Bricks Forge has a video that talks about how all of this works that you should probably watch first, but it's pretty intuitive. I figured it out pretty quickly, so I think you can too. So the first thing we're gonna do is create this on page load event. When you create a new node editor, it always has one on page load event, but we needed a second one to do some JavaScript. So the first thing I would suggest is you can just right click and then at the top it'll be document events and then add that on page load. So it will pop up like that. And then you can grab this arrow here and draw where you want it to connect. So if you just drop it, it's gonna pop it back up. If you click out, it's gonna close it. The other way is to right click on the canvas and then I search for JavaScript, advanced JavaScript here, and then connect those up. So on page load, we're gonna run some JavaScript. So that's all that's going on there. So I'm gonna delete that, delete that, and dive into the JavaScript. I also have a blog post written that contains the code, so you can go copy it if you want. But you can pop open the JavaScript and have a small floating window or a full screen view. And what this is doing is as soon as the page load, it just goes and checks to see if that storage item exists. And if it does, it's gonna log that it's verified, and then if it has expired, it's going to delete it so that it's gonna run the pop-up again. So again, just what this is doing, it checks to see if the user had previously clicked that button. That's what this code does. And if they did, it's going to check to see if it's expired or not. And if it's expired, it's gonna run the pop-up again. So that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is come down here to our default on page load event, and we're going to create a branch with a condition. So with this condition, we're gonna check if the local storage item age gate exists, 
and it contains the value verified. So if we go look one more time over in our inspect application, age gate, it's looking to see if this word verified is there. And if it is, what's it gonna do? We're going to branch off to a true false. So this branch item here, you can just right click on the canvas and search for branch and add that in. This branch element allows us to one, check for a condition and then test true or false. So if it's true, meaning age gate verified exists in the browser, let's close the pop-up. We don't, we don't even want to run it. So come over here, refresh. You're not even going to see the pop-up. If I come and inspect application and delete this, so application storage, delete our age gate item and refresh. It's going to pop that back up because now it's false and it says open pop-up. There's your ID that we needed to copy earlier. So let me go grab that one more time. So let's go back into WordPress admin and then go to bricks templates and that pop-up ID is 894. So what I did was I said, if our age gate value is there, close the pop-up 894. And that is, if you right click in the canvas and type pop, you can say open pop-up or close pop-up, which is a really cool uh, action here. So if it's true, close pop-up, if it's false, open that pop-up and ask the user to click, yes, I accept. So that's that second part here. And then the third part is on form submit. So we have another set of actions for form. Let's see, I think you click uh, type in submit. So if you right click and say submit, you can say on submit form events. And the search is the actual item, not the heading. So that might be one area for improvement is if we search form, we would get, you know, all the form events, but just type in submit for now and then go find your on submit event. So that means when the user submits that pro form, what's going to happen. And the way you wire this up is it's asking for a selector. So on my pro form here, I've got this age gate double underscore form, and I'm going to just pop that into the selector. And then it's going to pop up this green check mark that says, Hey, I see it. We've got it. And then I've selected selector type exactly this form. So we don't use any other one. If you had multiple forms with that same selector, you might have to change the type here like all elements. So if you wanted to do that, but in our case, we just want this very specific form, exactly this form. And then we can choose to run this next branch on error or success. So we're looking for that successful submission. So we're going to run this on success. So that's a little complex, but I think if you just take a step back and look at what's going on, you'll see when the user clicks the form, and it's successful, we're gonna run this second bit of JavaScript here. And what this is, all of this up here is just hard-coded variables for your storage duration. So 10 seconds, if we just wanted to do a quick test, I might copy this value here called 10 seconds and swap it out right here. So add the current time for your desired duration right here, if you wanted it to be a week, Right here, if you wanted it to be longer, you'd have to just do the math and create a new variable like for a year or whatever you want. So this next bit of JavaScript is going to set that verified and expiration time to the local storage item. So the JavaScripts, you know, this is a really easy one. Take all of this away and this is really all the code's doing. We have this variable here 
and we're setting a local storage item. That's it. Okay, so I'm gonna save that and close. Double check to make sure it's correct. Yep, so there's a save and save and close here. I recommend clicking that every single time, then clicking save and then clicking save. It's a few extra clicks and I don't know if all of them are necessary, but that's what I've been doing. So let's find the last thing that happens. So after the user clicks the submit button, the JavaScript runs and then let's close the pop-up. It's really just that easy. So zooming out and looking at the entire workflow one more time, let's see if we can make it as big as possible. On page load, we're gonna run some JavaScript to check to see if that storage item's there. On page load, we're going to run some other commands checking to see if the storage item is there. And we really need this bit of JavaScript up here to check if it's expired because there's no built-in tool to check that. So this little JavaScript checks if it's there and if it's expired. And then also on page load, we're gonna branch a condition that says, is the age gate verified? Does that exist for that storage item? And if it's true, we're gonna close the pop-up. If it's false, we're gonna run the pop-up. Then the user's gonna click the on submit action and run some JavaScript to set the storage item based on the duration. One thing I wish to see here in the BricksForge node editor is the ability to right click and create like a JavaScript variable here that we can then just plug in. So we could use the time variable instead of having it hard coded right here, we could just call it back up, but that's not here yet. So you just have to hard code it in right there pick, you know, let's do 10 seconds, change this, save and close. So after they click submit, 10 seconds is going to pass by and it's going to reset the storage item. And then finally, close the pop up here in this little bit of the node. So if you have any questions about this, please put them down in the comments or uh, send me a message through Facebook Messenger, and I will try to help you out as best I can. So let's go test it out one more time. So yes, let me in. One, two, three, four. Should be about 10 seconds and the storage item is gone. Let's take a look, application, it's no longer there. Click yes, let me in. Let's count down 10 seconds again and then try to go to this other page and see what happens. So that should be about 10 seconds. And if we refresh the page, now we have this pop-up. So you'll have to time that out exactly right. Um, let's duplicate it and just play around to make sure everything's working. Yeah, so after 10 seconds, that age gate's gonna pop back up, which is really cool. So if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I've got a link in the comments below on the video to the blog post where you can follow it and copy the code. And I hope you uh, are experimenting with the Bricks Forge node editor because man, this thing is powerful. This isn't even auto, uh, animations. This is just running user experience, JavaScript, all of that. So uh, the animations is a whole nother side of things where you can build uh, complex animations with the same type of UI, creating a timeline and all of that. So you can go back and forth between the node editor and the animations editor. And I think that's just so cool. Great work, Bricks Forge team. I absolutely love it. All right, see you in the next one. Have a good day.